Best Buy and CNET have announced a self-proclaimed first of its kind partnership that transforms how brands can engage consumers while they discover and shop for the latest technology. According to a Best Buy press release with a combined unduplicated reach of 50 million unique visitors per month, Best Buy and CNET are offering brands the opportunity to engage larger audience, excuse me, larger audiences of high intent shoppers, strengthening the reach and impact of their messages. Customers will see curated content and unbiased editorial advice from CNET's experts across various Best Buy channels, such as Best Buy.com, Best Buy stores as well, and of course, Best Buy's mobile app, encompassing a variety of product reviews and expert picks that align with their shopping experiences. As part of the partnership, the brands are also initiating a new retail media model between a media publication and a retailer. Not surprised I probably got to that eventually, are you, Ann? No. Advertisers will be able to share ad spaces across Best Buy and CNET, allowing them to see the impact of their advertising campaigns through a full funnel closed loop media solution. And you're more the expert on this than I am. So lucky for you, this is also the put you on the spot question of the week. Are you ready All right. for it? Yes, let's do it. All right. Here's the question from the folks at AM, the AM Consumer and Retail Group. This innovative first of a kind partnership has the ability to more clearly measure attribution and drive efficiencies across the marketing funnel in exciting new ways. With that power, however, are you concerned at all about CNET maintaining its objectivity in its content and reviews, which is, of course, how it garnered consumer trust? I, I'm not, not really. I mean, no. I think that you look at number one, I think this is good because it's providing expo more exposure to more people for both CNET and for Best Buy. I think CNET's already got lots of advertisers. Like we've seen this with Wirecutter, with CNET, with all these other okay, consumer reports type too. sites. Yeah. Like you're already getting advertising revenue that if, there, if there's going to be influence, it's, it's already there um, based on the advertisers. But I think more importantly is like, once you've captured these people, this wider funnel of people, you're bringing them down to the product page on Best Buy. And ultimately you're giving the, the customer access to any kind of, of information that they could possibly need to solidify this purchase decision. One being these reviews from CNET that kind of provide this objective point of view on the product you're about to buy. The second being reviews from Best Buy's uh, you know, customers who have already purchased this product. And I think there is, it's smart on Best Buy's part because I think there is growing like concern about the validity of those reviews because so many retailers launch campaigns to get the reviews in the first place. So I think that like this provides that like 360 view of what is possible and, and really what people think about that product. And then finally, I think that you tie this in with the ability to write on that same product page, connect with somebody from Best Buy, the virtual store people to kind of get those questions answered, to get their opinion, which you would have gone to a store for before to say, here's what CNET's telling me. Here's what your reviews are telling me. Now you mm. person at Best Buy, like put the, put the final like vote of confidence in so that I know what to do about this purchase. Or I, I have that final kind of confidence, which I think is going to be another another kind of leg to the stool of of that change to digital shopping. So I think Best Buy really is and CNET are really doing something magical with this. Um, so that's Ma that's my my take. Magical. You just dropped magical. You hate I did, magic. Yeah. You hate magic. It scares yeah. you. Yeah. Um, I mean magician specifically, magician but I think you, that yes. this is like this has science and data and a lot of reporting, one to one. Right. customer reporting to back right. up what they're talking about. So, right. I, yeah. I'm no, a, I mean, I'm a me, big fan to me. Yeah. I think I, I think net net I am too. I've been thinking a lot about this one. I don't know which way I come down on it long-term, but um, you know, I think I agree with you on your point about um, you know, the objectivity of CNET. I think, I mean, it doesn't really change the game for CNET in, in my opinion. And the article stated too, or the press release stated that, you know, they plan to show warts and all what CNET thinks of the products on Best Buy. Yeah. And so I actually think that is potentially more beneficial to the reputation of CNET if they, yep. in fact, do that. And that also will have a, a strong and impact Buy. on and Best Buy. Exactly. That's what yeah. I was just going to say and on Best Buy in the long run, too. So I think I agree. I think magical is the right phrase to potentially use here, too, as much as I was giving you a little bit of grief for it, because. I think this is the first domino of of many more dominoes to come in this vein. You think of like cooking content and recommendations for grocery, home decorating content and recommendations in the home furnishings online space and 
So the, I think the race now is officially on to see up who locks up what content from whom when. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing, again, it comes back to first party data, right? Yeah. Advertise drive content to the publish or advertisers drive the content publishers businesses, right? That's historically how it's worked. Mm -hmm. But first party data has been getting harder and harder to, for those content publishers to get. And so bedfellows like this start to make a ton more sense because Best Buy has the first party data and the two of them, Best Buy and CNET, are therefore then stronger together and can coordinate and cooperate on their advertising placement so that they both can win. So one plus one can literally equal three. So yes, by this rationale, I think overall this headline could be massive as we look at the future of the overall content slash retail evolution landscape, however you want to describe it.